Next, we come to partnerships, which is one of those topics that the examiner can easily fit into the exam, especially these two-mark type of questions. Uh, the reason being is the, he could ask you for what would happen if there's a small change in the partnership, um, what would happen in pieces of the partnership jigsaw, the various bits that make up partnership accounts, like current account, capital account, etc. So it's one of those topics that has a tremendous chance of coming up and does come up regularly. Now, what is a partnership? That's our first concern. I'll show you the little definitions and so on on the screen. It is the relationship which subsists between partners, exists between partners, with a view to profit. So that's the first thing. It's Quite simply, se several sole traders coming together to become a partnership. So the best way to look at it is if a sole trader needs expertise in other fields, let's say the sole trader is very good at doing business in terms of winning business and so on, and uh, needs someone who's good at the technical side, let's say if the business needs to manufacture something and you have someone who's very good, uh, qualified or experienced in manufacturing, that partner will help the first partner. Then what might happen is they might need another partner who's very good at administrative skills, doing admin and running the business. That partner could easily come in maybe at a slightly lower partnership percentage, but very much part of the original firm. In other words, where a sole trader needs to develop other skills, and doesn't have the time to actually do it or uh, go on courses and learn about things and read books and gain experience, or perhaps doesn't have the personal characteristics, he or she might choose other partners. And together it becomes several sole traders together, which is obviously a partnership. So that's all it is. A relationship which subsists, exists between, between persons carrying on a business in common with a view to profit. Very, very easy indeed. Right, what's next? A partnership therefore has two or more partners or owners. In the same way as for a sole trader, the profits of the business are owned by the partners. This makes it necessary to share the profits of the business amongst the partners. So, there you are. There is a need to share the profits amongst partners. What else can we say? Now, in recent times, we've been looking at a limited company situation where the company has a separate legal personality from the shareholders. Obviously, the shareholders appoint the directors to run the company, but the directors are usually shareholders. So you have the company on the one hand, and you have the shareholders on the other. They both have a legal personality. That is to say, the, the, whereas we accept that the, the shareholders have a legal personality, it's interesting to note that the company also has a legal personality. However, when, you, when you're dealing with a, with a partnership, the partners are the firm. So legally, they're one and the same thing. So that's quite an important point enshrined in the Partnership Act in many countries. So the partners are the firm. But for accounting reasons, we try to keep them separate. For example, if a partner introduces $5,000 into the, into the firm, obviously the firm will credit that amount. Credits, notice our liabilities, liabilities are credits. So what the firm will do is debit cash, because the asset of cash at the bank goes up, and credit the partner's capital account. So that's the double entry. So we, we're approaching these things through double entry all the time. So cash that comes into the company, or I should say the firm, is debited to the bank account, and the credit goes to the capital account. So the fact that it's credited to the capital account simply means the firm owes that money back to the partner. 
if anything should go wrong and the, fir the firm is wound up. So for accounting reasons, we, keep to, we try to keep them separate. But um, in, legal, in legal terms, the partners are the firm. So let's stick with the accounting side. Maybe that's useful. But do remember these other points, because we do get small little questions on uh, relationships and um, the legal side as well. You have 50 questions, 42 markers, and 10 one marker. Uh, and um, those 10 one markers uh, could cover anything, tiny little points, what's a partnership and so on, legal personality, all the rest of it. So do be careful to read widely, number one. Student Accountant Magazine is very good these days, uh, has been for some time. Uh, any other material that you can get hold of, the internet, etc. But do try to read as widely as you can and get some general commercial feel for the context in which accountancy operates. So, for accounting purposes, they hold separate identities. And write that down kindly. But for accounting purposes, they hold separate legal or separate identities, not legal, separate identities, the money that the firm owes the partners are held in a capital account or a current account. These are credits in the firm's books. Remember, credits are liabilities. So I'm adding a little bit to our uh, handout, our, our material, uh, so that you can pick up a few more ideas. So you get the general feel for a partnership. Very, very easy. It's like several sole traders together with different skills. The double entry system, of course, doesn't change. They're just one or two peculiarities like a capital account, a current account, that kind of thing. It's all the same, really. It's just that the current account shows profit shares, interest on capital, that kind of thing. Whereas the capital account is, is, it tends to be kept separate and largely untouched unless there is a big move uh, like a new partner joining or leaving or whatever it might be. So there you are. What else does the, do the notes say? Next paragraph, say paragraph three, a partnership will usually have a partnership agreement which will state how the profits are to be shared amongst other things. So underline that, a partnership agreement. So vitally in the exam, you'll get the context of a partnership, who the partners are. There'll be slight changes, slight um, uh, alterations maybe in the relationship, someone joining, maybe someone leaving. So you've got to deal with that. Another thing could happen is you have a, an ongoing partnership and uh, because certain partners have contributed more in terms of cash money introduced, called the capital account, they are awarded a little bit of interest uh, to compensate them for not putting it into a bank account uh, and earning interest in that way. If they take money out of the firm, on a profit-sharing uh, basis, if they actually withdraw it um, as drawings on account of profit share, they usually charge a little bit of interest on drawings, but more about that later. Let's have a look at the sharing story in front of us. Very, very important indeed to grasping the concept behind partnerships. Right, a, partner, a partnership has four partners, Jason, Howard, Gary, and Mark. Jason, Howard, Gary, and Mark. Four separate sole traders working together to form a partnership. In the year to the 30th of June 2007, the partnership has made profits totaling 106,250. That's absolutely vital to be aware of that figure, some figure or other. So they've been trading for a year, and they've achieved that profit. So it's been a successful partnership. 
Now, the various partners are now being described. Uh, some strong language here. Uh, one thing to look out for, of course, is the date. So maybe I should underline that. The dates are crucial. Right, here comes the first partner, Jason. Jason is rich but stupid. I didn't write these notes, but uh, the person writing has used a lot of imagination, which is great, makes it more interesting. Jason is rich but stupid. I don't know what Jason would feel about that description, but that's what it says in the question. He, has made a, he was made a partner because he could invest 100000 into the partnership. He withdrew 30000 from the business on the 1st of July, 2006. Now, if you measure carefully against the year end, that feels like the first day of the year. So I'm going to write that down. First day of the year. 1st of July, 2006. So he withdrew. That withdrew kind of word is often described as drawings. So I'm going to bring that into play. Withdrew, sometimes described as drawings. How does poor... Oh, by the way, let's go back to Jason for a second. He could invest... He's rich. He could invest 100000 So can I call that capital... And even though he put in 100,000 of capital, he then withdraws uh, on the 1st of July 30,000, something called drawings. So clearly, if he invests money, he ought to be paid interest on capital. If he then withdraws on the same day, you see the description Jason was given at the start, he puts in 100,000 and immediately withdraws 30,000. Would you agree, because he's withdrawn 30000 he should be penalized in some way, or shall we say discouraged, by being charged a little bit of interest, charged interest, on the drawing. So he's given interest on the capital, and then he's charged, which is the opposite, of course, interest on the drawings. So there you are, lots of activity, lots of accounting activity. Here's the next person being described. Howard is poor but clever and could only invest 20000 into the partnership. Now, that 20000 of course, is what? You're right, capital. Due to him being clever and completing work quicker than the other partners, he took responsibility for hiring and firing staff in the business. So a degree, he probably has to have a salary. He might get a salary of, say, 5000 whatever it might say, be. Uh, say, 5000 salary, maybe, for doing this additional work, you see. But we'll wait to see what the question actually says later. So he took responsibility for hiring and firing staff in the business. He, he withdrew 30000 on the 30th of June, 2007, so I suppose that 30000 would have to be charged drawings. Now, interesting date that. I was saying to be careful of the dates. That seems to be the last day of the year. So obviously, if you're going to be charging him, him interest on the drawings to discourage this kind of practice, um, because it's on the last day of the year, there's not going to be any interest, because it is the last day of the year. So there you are. So let's have a look at our friend Howard once more. We've got rid of Jason. We understand who Jason is and his characteristics. Here's Howard. And the charm of a partnership is the various skills people have, their personal characteristics. Poor but clever, could only invest 20000 clearly he's poor. 
Due to him being clever and completing work quicker, he has uh, this extra responsibility. And later, he might get a salary. And then at the end of the year, uh, because he's clever, he waited till the end of the year somehow, that's when he withdraws his 30,000. Notice he withdraws the same as Jason, but Jason does it on the first day of the year. Immediately after putting in his 100,000, he withdraws 30,000. So he's charged interest on the 30,000. Whereas our friend Howard, because he's clever, did it on the last day of the year. So part of it is, of course, the fact that uh, Jason might have needed the money, whereas Howard might not have, because he's general, is generally a poor person. Um, use your imagination as we read this question. Very well constructed. Then we come to our friend Gary, partner number three. Invested 50,000 capital into the partnership. So I'm going to say capital once more. He has a liking for designer clothes and fast cars. Consequently, he withdrew 25,000 on the 1st of July. Is that 1st July the first day of the year? So he puts 50,000 in, and then he suddenly realizes he's got to make a payment on some on, uh, on one of his fast cars, so he says, I need another 25000 to pay for it. And then a few months later, about six months later, he takes out another 25000 So would you agree at this point he's actually taken out as much as he's put in? But don't forget, if this partnership is successful, he will get also a profit share, you see, and that profit share will entitle him to some money. And so you could argue that the two 25000 he's taken out is... Uh, partly covered by his profit share, one would imagine. So there you are. That is the first day of the year. And this is halfway through the year, mid midpoint of year. So if there is any interest on in drawings, those dates must be taken into account. So those dates are absolutely vital. So can I just write that in as a little warning? I'll write in red as a point of caution. Dates are everything, really. Dates are crucial. Mark also invested 50,000 capital And withdrew 30,000 on the 1st of July. That's the first day of the year. Mark's wife has just had a baby, and he would therefore like to have a guaranteed share of the profits. Quite understandable. He's got some expenses. So let's look at our friend Mark for a second. He's invested 50,000, rather like Gary, and withdrew 30,000 on which looks like the first day of the year. So obviously there's a bit of interest to be charged to Mark during the year itself. And reason for that uh, is uh, his, his wife's had a baby, they've had a baby together, and some money is needed obviously for this. So what he wants is a guaranteed share. That's quite an interesting point, isn't it? A guaranteed share. The partners have decided that profits which should be distributed at a ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 3 is to 4. Jason Howard, Gary Mark. And um, what I like to do when I look at something like that is I add up, you see, 2 and 1, 3 and 3, 6 and 4 is 10. So I suppose one could argue, if you did a, almost like a division sign there, 2, ten, two tenths or 20% is Jason's profit share. One tenth or ten percent is Howard's, Gary's is about thirty percent, and Mark is about forty percent. So you can see there, if you add two and one to three and four, you actually have ten. And then if you use that as a denominator, you can get little percentages, fractions or percentages worked out. So that's a lovely thing to do. Just be a bit sensitive to that, um, in which case your uh, number crunching should be much easier. All right, so that's the idea. Uh, Jason. Howard, Gary, Mark, four quite diverse characters, different personalities, etc.
So let's read on a bit more. They've decided to share distribute, distribute profits. So profits must be distributed in that percentage. How do you think the profits should be shared amongst the partners is the big issue. So let's go off and read a little bit more about how all this will work. So I turn, therefore, to page 100. Interest on capital. So the different styles of question you can get. Obviously, one style is where the examiner says to you, please explain some uh, concepts of partnerships, in which case those are the one-mark questions. You have 10 of those, not all on partnerships, of course, but uh, you might have to choose between little statements, uh, which one do you think is the most accurate, that kind of thing. So be careful of that. Uh, the other possibility, of course, is getting tiny calculations. And that is always the bigger challenge because it has to be precise. Mind you, the, the, uh, since you have multiple choice objective test type questions, even the words have got to be correct. Otherwise, they'll be marked wrong. So, but there's a little bit more guesswork involved with the words than the numbers. The numbers have got to be precise. It is for that reason I now take you into the uh, second page. I've been teaching partnerships for 25 years, probably. Uh, so it's interesting how uh, many aspects of partnerships have not changed over the years. So what I studied myself as a student seems to be the way you know, questions are framed these days. So that's a nice thing about partnerships. For, from, a, from an accounting point of view, hardly anything has changed, uh, certainly not at this level. To reward partners who have invested more into the business, the partnership may allocate some of the profits based on the level of capital invested. See that? That's very important, based on the level of capital invested. This is called interest on capital. Uh, clearly, if they put the money into a bank account and got interest on it, the interest that they would earn, um, they, would, they are now losing by putting the money into the, into the partnership. So the partnership ought to pay them interest at least on a commercial uh, basis, uh, uh, at arm's length, as they say, a fair market value for their money. So if the market uh, interest rate is 6%, they should be, get, they should be given at least 6%. Otherwise, the, uh, if they made a logical decision, they take the money out and put it into the bank. So the, the partnership needs the money to improve its cash flow and to be able to borrow, et cetera, and to boost up its, strengthen its statement of financial position. So it's nice for the partners to leave the money in the partnership itself. What salaries then? To reward those partners who take on extra responsibilities within the business, they may receive within the business, they may receive a salary. A partner's salary is not a business expense like the salary of an employee, but a way in which profits are allocated. This is absolutely vital. Can I just ask you to highlight that, please? But a way in which profits are allocated. Now, do you agree that if the partner, one of our partners earlier, I think it was Howard, uh, was going to be paid 5000 for the extra work he, he does with recruiting new staff, etc., the... That $5,000 is not to be charged to the income statement in arriving at profit, unlike, say, a company might do to one of its staff. Because Howard owns the firm in part, any salary that Howard may be paid should be treated as if it is part of his profit-sharing arrangement. So it's like a profit share. So do be careful of that. You mustn't charge it to the main income statement. You must charge it a bit lower down to something called the appropriation of profit statement or account. It's lower down once you've established your net profit. Very, very important indeed. So, so a salary that's paid is not salary in the sense of a company. It's salary in the sense of it being part of the profit-sharing arrangements. That is absolutely vital, and the examiner will push you to a great extent in that area. What else can we say? Interest on drawings. 
to penalize those partners to take out more drawings from the business, penalize, of course, to discourage in some way, who take out more drawings from the business, in other words, who withdraw money from the business and so the business suffers a bit, especially these days in slightly harder economic times, the partnership may charge interest on drawings. Interest in drawings results in a re reduction in the amount of profit the partners allocated. Do you see that? So the, I suppose one could say that interest on capital is a form of profit sharing rather than the style of a salary. So interest on capital is money that the firm will give the partner for investing capital. Salary, of course, the, what the firm gives the partner for doing extra work. But interest on in drawings is exactly the opposite. So if you firm up in your mind how interest on in capital works, then interest on in drawings is exactly the opposite. So that's the easiest way to understand some of these points. If you know one and you know the other one is the opposite, it is the opposite. That's it. So interest in drawings, I suppose, is more the, fir the firm being given money by the partner. So in other words, the partner's penalized. So let's read that again. It's a very easy concept, really. To discourage those partners who take out more drawings from the business, the partnership may charge interest on drawings. Interest on drawings result in a reduction in the amount of profit the partner is allocated. So that word reduction is an absolutely crucial word. And so you come to your profit-sharing ratio. Maybe before I do that, on the odd occasion, though it's not that often, what will happen is the partners will make a special loan to the firm. Say one partner who's come into some private money, 150000 whatever, 250000 some relative has left this partner. The partner will then put that money, he or she, into the firm as a temporary loan, say for six months, whatever it might be. And let's say the, the firm needs the money, uh, extra money just for a time, just for a season. So what happens then is the firm will pay the partner a bit of interest. Now that interest, because it's interest on loan, should be equated in your mind, should be equal in your mind to the interest that the partner might, the partnership, the firm, might have had to have paid to a bank. So that should be charged in arriving at ordinary profit. Depends on each question's instructions, of course, the accounting policy of the firm. But if it's silent, the traditional way of doing interest on loans, the interest on loan must be charged to the income statement in arriving at profit, which is then shared out. So the interest on loan is a bit different to interest on drawings, interest on capital, on the grounds that it's just a one-off arrangement. So not difficult at all. Profit-sharing ratio, then. This is the ratio in which any remaining profits should be shared amongst the partners after they have been allocated interest on capital, salaries, and interest on drawings. So this is the final step, then. Any remaining profits should be shared after, absolutely vital word, they've been allocated interest on capital, salaries, interest on drawings, interest on loan, anything like that. But when you come to your appropriation section of your income statement, so you come to your net profit, and below that you have the uh, appropriation of profit section. In that you have things like interest on drawings, giving the firm money and charging the partners, then you have interest on capital, which is the partners getting money and the firm suffering. You also have interest on current account, which is much the same. The difference between capital and current is capital is more fixed, uh, current is more fluctuating. And of course, interest on drawings, as we mentioned earlier, the firm benefits. Uh, you might also have to give them some salaries, so the firm suffers, the partners enjoy that. 
and eventually whatever's left is shared out in some kind of a profit sharing arrangement. Do you remember our four partners here shared in a, a certain proportion? And if you remember the uh, total of all those profit sharing uh, items, the ratio adds up to 10, it's just to make our calculation easier. The examiner will go out of our way to make it easy. Uh, so it's just a simple calculation with a calculator. All right, so there you are. That's the, the way partnerships work. So a quick synopsis, a quick summary. Uh, several sole traders together make a partnership. Every one of those partners brings different skills. They also bring different amounts of money into the partnership. Some have uh, different lifestyles and want to take money out. That's absolutely fine, but they'll be penalized with interest on the drawings. <clears throat> Excuse me, some partners uh, have uh, other skills, so they're given a salary. And eventually, when everything is put into the mix, I don't forget the most important point is uh, apart from establishing your net profit, you then have a profit sharing arrangement through, called the appropriation of profit. So there you are, that's the system. Now comes our crucial example. Uh, before we come to that, there's one more point that I mustn't miss, a guaranteed minimum share. Perhaps I could consider that with you first, a guaranteed minimum share. A partner may be guaranteed a minimum share of the profits if the partner has not received this share after allocating profits in accordance uh, to the above, the shortfall should be given to the partner. So that's the crucial point. And as you'd imagine, the shortfall is then taken from the other partners in accordance with the profit sharing ratio. So here we are, example one. Using the amounts detailed in the sharing story, so stop the tape now, please, and go back and reread the previous page. Allocate the profits of the business in accordance with the following partnership agreement. Interest on capital is 5% per annum. So for example, if Jason contributed 100,000, 5% on that, of course, is 5,000. So very, very straightforward indeed. Uh, clearly, if uh, Jason introduced, say, another 20,000 halfway through the year, that 5% will be multiplied by the extra money introduced, but also multiplied by 6 twelfths to indicate the period of the year during which the partnership enjoys the extra money. Uh, that Jason has provided. So Jason should be rewarded in some way. And so the partnership sets up a liability, and that is therefore to be credited to Jason's current account. So that's the beauty of knowing your debits from your credits. The liabilities obviously are credits, and uh, the current account, of course, is the credit, the money that the firm owes the partners individually. It's done in columns usually, as we will see. So interest and capital, nothing to explain. Uh, Howard is to receive a salary of 5000 If you remember, Howard is doing some extra work, something about the recruitment side of staff and looking after staff, human resources, whatever it might be, HR, as they call it sometimes in some countries. Interest on in drawings is 10% per annum, and that, of course, is meant to penalize, to uh, discourage people taking money out of the firm. So because the firm loses the use of the money, uh, it is charged to the partner. In other words, a partner uh, must uh, give up some profit share uh, equal to the interest on drawings, that kind of thing. With all these terms, try to understand what they mean. Don't do it mechanically. The biggest thing exams, exams are about, uh, especially this sort of paper, is uh, the examiner wants to know that you understand what you're doing. Even though these days most people do the computer-based exams, the, the questions are so clever. They're so cleverly drafted. Uh, during revision, I'll show you uh, the pilot paper written by ACCA, giving you an indication as to future exam standard. And slowly, I'll take you through every one of those questions uh, so that you can understand, including partnerships, of course, how various bits of the syllabus might be examined. So that's still to come. 
a few hours of that. Right, so that's interesting drawings. Nothing much to say there, uh, apart from what I've just said. Profit sharing ratio is stated as 2 is to 1 is to 3 is to 4. And if you add that up, we were saying earlier, that's 10. Mark has a gap. That's a difficult point. Careful. Guaranteed. Mark has a guarantee. Minimum profit share of 42,000. So if, for example, it comes to 39,500, in other words, it's 3,000 short, his total profit share, uh, the other partners have got to bear that out. Mark is the fourth, uh, the last mentioned partner. Um, the other partners will have to bear the extra 3,000 in their profit sharing ratio. And that's how the system works. So there you are. Four partners decided to start a firm together. And uh, these are the facts. They've introduced various amounts of money. And the, the firm has done quite well, actually, with a nice, healthy profit share of uh, $106,000. 250 So stop the tape now as, we, as you read the question. Run through it once more. I think I shall uh, pause at this stage uh, to give you a chance to read the question, and then we'll come back and actually solve that question slowly, meticulously. Thank you.